Hi everyone! So I am super excited today to show you some new items that Spellbinders has launched. Several new collections, so there's a lot um, just fun and new of course. It's a launch and uh, just adorable, elegant, I mean just so many collections, something for everybody. There's, you know, snowflakes. There's these little like uh, Day of the Dead kind of people. There are new better press plates and all kinds of fun things. So today I'm going to show you a, a couple of the new collections. Um, I do have something from all of them, uh, but again, you know, I'll just release some here and there and give you some time to digest them and check it out. And I will link in the description box though all the different collections. I just call them collection like selections. So if you click on it, it'll go to that whole collection. Um, on Spellbinders, and those would be affiliate links, which means I'll make a small commission if you're purchasing items to those links. Uh, I might link them to scrapbook.com, maybe Scrapbook Pal, uh, just depends. Uh, other, you know, um, scrapbooking stores and companies carry Spellbinders items, and sometimes they're released there also at the same time, but sometimes Spellbinders release them first, so it just depends. But I'll link all those different things as I can. And these items were sent free of charge for my review, and of course, all opinions on my own. Okay, guys, so Speaking I got lost my train of thought kind of a little bit. Uh, what they did this time around is that they created a lot of bundles. I don't know if the Day of the Dead one, um, this one's called Dance and Halloween, is a bundle collection, but they have a new thing called Envelope of Wonder, and I'll show you really quick on my phone, even though my phone's a little mm, worse for the wear. You see, you have the base envelope, and then it comes with some cute things, but you can also do the seasonal items, and there's also a bundle for all of the seasonal items in you guys. So I will do that one uh, shortly, but today we're going to look at the Dance and Halloween, the Better Press Plates, and some other couple items I have here for you guys uh, to check out. So that's Envelope of Wonder, uh, Full Bloom uh, Poinsettia dies, let's see, from the Glimmer for the Holidays Collection. Again, some of those things are bundled because they have like a stencil and hot plate, you know, hot foil plate, <laughs> not so much a hot plate. Uh, oh, the Gnome set here is another bundled item if you want to pick up the whole bundle or just individual uh, things for like the gnome for you know Halloween and uh, Christmas and all that kind of cute stuff um, even spring and Easter so again like I said these bundle uh, deals are there there's BB's snowflakes which also has a big bundle I think Penny Black um, stamp set is also in a bundle if you just want the whole thing right um, some new hugs collections the Stampendous hugs which I love those little bears and this time they have snowmen you guys look at that a little Santa and um, a little gnome there and then that has some stamp sets that uh, coordinate with it I believe I have this stamp set I might have both of them to share with you guys whenever we get there um, that set also has these holiday hugs like backgrounds which are really nice I've done some of their backgrounds in the past the Stampendous ones are really really gorgeous you just cut them up I don't know that one, that one has a bundle uh, I believe the Susan Tierney collection uh, the new Snow Garden collection um, generally has a bundle but let me see yeah, that one also has a bundle if you would like all the new ones that are from that collection. But for today, we're going to start with the Dance in Halloween. I do have a couple things I want to share with you. Um, so Spellbinders is carrying more and more like different brand items. And some of those are like Waffle Flower and, you know, Ranger products, uh, Vivant, um, Stampendous, right? All these different things. So these are uh, a couple things you can pick up. They have something called like Shaker Covers and they're in tons of different sizes. The one I have here is for A2 cards. I don't know if I'm going to use this today, but I just want to mention it in case this is something you're interested in. They have them there, lots of different sizes. Um, basically, you just peel off the little 3M strips here, and then you wrap it around your card, and that your whole card is a shaker, right? Like front. Uh, I usually do that as a topper. So I'll do my card, you know, topper, place it, put this around it with the little shaker bits in there, and then I stick that on my card because it would be hard to get this on your card without having to, done something like that. But I'll play with those very soon. They also have this from like Buttons Galore and more. Again, uh, another you know new company they have there on their site. Um, this one happens to be called Spellbound, and look at this goodness. I mean, it's not just female. There's like little, like little spheres in there. Some are larger, some are smaller. Purple, orange, like a yellow color. There's like bats. I can see like big confetti bats in there. There's like silver tubes. Lots of little female kind of hearts. Uh, little tiny stars down here. Hollow stars. I mean, just the cutest designs. So if you want to check those out, they have quite a selection there. Um, just showing you those because they are very Halloween-y, but I don't think I'm using them today. Now, as far as the better press plates, there is a fall or autumn collection, and then there's the Halloween. I have a few items from the fall. Actually, I have two. Well, three, because this uh, set here is the notched 
frames, basically, notch corner frames, I believe they call it. So it's a nesting die set. Looks really gorgeous. Pairs right back to like this Autumn Thanks frame. You can see that it has that same shape within the inside. So you can cut that out with one of these dies. You can do your wording. They are separate, two separate plates. There are a ton of new Autumn plates that are really gorgeous. Uh, there's one called, I think, Falling Leaves, and they're separate leaves, and they have separate dies for them. So you can cut them out, which is really nice. I love that. So you can play with those. This one's more of a frame kind of look. Um, plate and then this one look how sweet the little mushrooms and I, I mean just those are together and see how this one has the die for the wording so that's basically how those leaves one um, work and it's really really great uh, your friendship keeps on giving and then you have the die for that if you want and then of course they're separate from those awesome mushrooms really just a gorgeous look uh, that one's called mushroom duo this one's autumn thanks frame you guys this is what I was mentioning the other day and coming soon I was like have you seen the Halloween designs these are so cute look at this open if you dare it's two different plates nice size I know sometimes I give measurements but just come kind of comparing it to my hand there uh, which is not a small hand <laughs> but uh, open if you dare is so nice and then it being separate I mean you can use that on all kinds of different cards and things I know I have like uh, vampire designs that'd be really cute like little um, yeah I mean how cute would that be so we have this little guy here and he's popping out of the little coffin there and then this is a background uh, pumpkins and ghosts background and again, really great for an A2 size. I mean, how gorgeous, really fun. All the different things that are on there. So I'm gonna use those today as backgrounds for our little dancing characters, but this one's called Spider Web Backgrounds. And this one is actually a little larger, I think. It looks larger. Oh yeah, so this one's six by four and three quarters, eh, four and, just over four and a half, a little smaller than four and three quarters. So it's a really nice size there with the spider webs, spider web background. And look at this, you guys. I am blown away by this one. Look at these images, and they're all separate. And then you have words also um, that they cut at the same time, so you can do your uh, better press. You can glimmer it. I know I haven't glimmered mine, but you can definitely try that out. Um, and you have the little strips. And look at their, like, jagged on the edges, like, ripped or torn. I just... It's so cute. Happy Halloween, happy haunting, you're wicked cute. Look at these designs. Look at this little spooky couple right here, the little um, ghost. I love it. Look at this little guy. I mean, just the cutest, and they're all separate. They're a good size. They aren't tiny. I hope you can see that. So, super excited to play with those very soon. And then, like I said, we have the notched frames here, but today we're looking at the Dance in Halloween. Um, and you know what? I don't know the names of these. I should have written that down. Sorry, guys. So, these are three different ones. Let me pull it up real quick, that way I can give you the names. Okay, so they are simple as Dancing Day of the Dead Boy, Day of the Dead Girl, and our last little guy who's so cute, he's like a little skeleton face, super simple, you see the pieces that belong to him, let me move this out of the way. Um, Dancing Grim, oh, he's like the Grim Reaper. <laughs> oh, how cute. <laughs> yeah, I mean, it is adorable. Um, so in Spanish, you know, with the Day of the Dead, the little girl's like Katrina, and the guy's the Katrina, mean handsome and I guess beautiful or good looking, but not really. Katharina is more like you're dressed up. I don't know. So, um, really cute. Um, so we have those guys. Again, the whole, I'll show you with these because we're going to play with them today, but you have his little body and then you're going to have, you know, what's his little, um, like hood or whatever I suppose is what he wears. And you have this little face. They did give you these things separate, like on here and here. And maybe if you wanted to put like, if the hood is black, maybe some gray accent or something or a reason that you would want to put something like that in there. His little face would be right in there. He has some accent pieces here. And on this one, he just has his little sickle and um, the pieces that go with that, right? So very simple, his little hands. Um, those are, I think, hand pieces there. So you can make it very simply, right? This one, he has a, a few pieces. The girl has her little hair. She has a little hair bun. And I, always, I wear my hair in a bun all the time, and she usually calls it a hair bun. <laughs> so um, she has her little hair bun on top there. And so you can kind of see what's going on here. I kind of placed them in a way that you can kind of tell there's her top and, you know, her little skirt. And then she has accent pieces, her little lips and everything. This is what's going to help you do the dancing thing. And then she has maracas, which are so cute. And it has a decorative piece there, too. And then she comes with flowers. And our little boy over here, hopefully you can see him. He has some um, a sombrero, basically. It has, like, a little decoration, I believe that is, for the sombrero there. His head would go in here. And then his little shirt and his little legs. Look at him. He's all dressed up. And then, again, accent piece. Those are like his little hands that would accent this area. More accent pieces. And look at his little guitar. So, I mean, so cute. 
little guitar right there with the accent pieces. I just think these are so adorable. They're going to be really easy to play with. So we're going to do all three today with some better press backgrounds. We're going for it, guys. So let me grab some paper and different items and we will get started. Okay, so first we're going to do some of the uh, better press uh, backgrounds and things. So let me move some of stuff to the side. Yeah, I always end up putting everything on my stool and then I'm standing up the whole time. <laughs> so, um, a couple things. Uh, let's see, I just have some black ink. This is just like a little sample I had received before the Better Press really came out, and so that's why it doesn't have the labeling, but it's the same Better Press ink in black. I'm going to put this to the side. We just want to do some backgrounds and things, so let's just get right to it. And cut down some paper. You know, this one was larger, right? The plate. So I cut down some gray paper for the spider web one. And I think this is like, um, well, I guess I can give you a measurement over here. Yeah, it's four and three quarters by six and three quarters. And in the better press, I pretty much always keep all three shims underneath. So I'd like to show you guys that the plastic shims, all three of them that it comes with are under here. We'll put our magnetic mat back. This guy will just pop it here in the center and it really pretty much just covers up that whole A2 size area. So with this one, this is just regular old, oh, no, no, no. <laughs> I do this all the time, you guys, oh my gosh, where I leave this stickiness there and I put something on it. Let's put that to the side. Okay, um, we're going to put this that way, that way that part is not around. I'm just going to stick this down here. This is just regular old uh, paper. It's not even that thick. Um, I would say it's very lightweight almost uh, papers. I'm just looking for the print. I don't, you know, I want the image um, on there. So just using that and again just a few little pieces of washi all around and I made this larger just because I want to catch all of it. I'm probably going to die cut it with uh, the notched um, die cut nesting die cuts that I showed you earlier so again as we go around we're just kind of like rubbing rubbing tapping tapping whatever it is that you need to really get your ink down this will be interesting because I don't think I've used very thin paper in this, but it should still um, get the image at least, if not like the impression part of it. I suppose you could use more of the um, shims that you have, like these guys. These are from the Universal Plates. So these are longer, but I suppose if it's something you do all the time, you can cut them down. Let's go. That looks pretty good. And just as easy as that, we're just going to pop this on here. And oops, run it through. And I feel some good pressure, so for sure it's pushing into my paper. And there it is. Really, again, delicate and gorgeous. I mean, look how, like, just how. Yeah, I mean, fine, right? That detail is, that's so pretty. Okay, so I'm going to wipe this off with, uh, some of these damp towel or just, uh, I always want to say paper towel, but it's not really paper towel because I don't want to get a bunch of floof on here, but just, um, maybe a shimmy or chamois if, uh, I haven't tried that before. But let's see. And then again, you can use the Ranger ink cleaner because it's, cleans up this kind of ink. Now, this is just a chamois that has water on it. So again, you can just wipe that down. You know, it's doing the job. Um, okay, let me clean up and then I'm going to go and get this ready for the next so for this plate. Next one, I'll be doing the same thing. Just the black ink, also. Um, I just cut some fun paper, like an orange paper. And this one's just like four and a half by five and three quarters, just big enough to know to clear all this. Again, I'm going to um, just ink that up. Put this on my press plate and run it through. Again, this paper is nothing special, just some pretty cardstock that's a nice bright color for um, Halloween. Look how pretty. Love it. Um, okay, and then let me clean this up and we're going to run some of this purple paper through to get some of the sentiments. I think that'll be fun. 
So I'll grab it. So we're going to get the plate and then we'll do the die afterwards. But let's just grab the plate for now. And I just want to make sure I give myself a lot of room for this one as far as. We'll just put that right down the center. And. So I cut this down. To like there. Just having an idea of where that is. Okay. And again, this is also just any old cardstock. And I'll just ink up my plate and run it through just as you've seen me do here. And I'll be right back. Let's see that guy. Look at that. So cute. Okay, I'll be right and back. With this guy, all we're going to do is take the die that's there. I love that little edge on that die. That is so cute. Uh, I mean, if you have other sentiments that fit in any one of these things, you can just, you know, um, stamp your sentiment and kind of eyeball it and see if you can get that cut with this. Um, maybe if it's just one strip, you know. That looks pretty good. I have it left to right. I don't know why I'm working with that up in the air. <laughs> Let's put that down. And I'm going to run that through and I'll just run it through my smaller machine here. Now I wasn't lining up my other, look at that, oh my gosh, <laughs> there we go. Now we have all these sentiments we can play with. I love it. So I'll put this to the side. Uh, like I said, I don't know if I line this up because I know it's a little bit close to the top of my paper and kind of farther from the bottom. Um, so I might cut that one by hand, but we'll see. Let's see. I'm taking the largest one of these guys. And yeah, so okay, from this one for sure, I'm just going to cut from the large one like this. And just going to put some tape there. And we'll have that cool background. And then on the other one, like I said, I wasn't laying it up, and I probably should have thought about that initially. So what I can do is see if, you know, the next one down might work for me. Or if you want everything and the word's not cut out at all. I mean, I kind of like that. That looks cute. Okay, let's just go with that. It's going to cut off, obviously, some of the edges, but... If you want the whole thing, I would just take it to a guillotine and trim it down that way. I just want to see that I'm kind of straight, left and right. And it's kind of a playful design, so, you know, it's all here and there. I don't know if there's a straight, right? But it looks like there is. Okay, so I'm going to cut that one out with this, and I'll be right back. larger one and just cut out some black paper, so that it'll be a matte layer for the, the orange one that we just did. So we have that. Uh, and this, and then I'll probably also run it through just for another card. Um, since we're making three cards for the three different characters, okay? So I'll just take this largest one and still also run that through. Um, like a fun kind of paper. Maybe some metallic paper or something glittery, I don't know. Alright, I'll be back. So the last one, I just cut this beautiful purple paper. And I just put a piece of printer paper on top. Just so that if any, there are any marred lines on this, that it wouldn't get off on there. And so I did a pretty good job. I think there's a couple, but it's not too bad. Okay, I'll be right back. So when I'm putting this stuff away, I was like, I have a feeling that if you just use the plates as an embossing thing, it should still work, theoretically, right? So why don't we? I'm going to try it. I was just putting everything away, and I thought... Oh, that's right, I want to try this. So there is ink on this. Well, not ink on it, but like, you know what I'm saying? I just used this, so there's a little dirtiness. I mean, I can push it in this way. It's going to push the, the cobwebs, like, the look in. I wonder if I push it up this way, if it'll actually imprint in the other direction. I don't know, but for right now, I'm going to try it this way. <laughs> and I'm just going to run it through the better press, because that's generally what this is used for. So how about if we put that on here? And we'll just try a little something. It may or may not work. You know, it's okay. So let's put that on here. Um, generally, I would tape that down, but how about if we don't? <laughs> and then I'll just run it through. And let's see what happens. 
if I thought about this first, I probably would have just letter pressed the paper first and then uh, die cut it. But let's see. Look! Oh my goodness! I am so glad I tried that. I didn't even stick it down. Oh my gosh! Because I was just thinking, I'm like, I bet you these emboss. I mean, why wouldn't they, right? That's the whole point. Um, Perfect. Okay, let me put this stuff away. We'll put our um, card bases together and then we'll start with our little so characters. I just have three A2 size card bases here. And so like for this one, I'm just going to stick that guy down. It has little white edges. Um, that's just how that set is. How pretty. And again, this is specialty paper, so I put glue. I put a little bit of glue. I might put a little some there and then try to soak up the excess. Um, that way it doesn't warp your paper. So that'll be that one. Of course I'll put something heavy on top of that. This guy and this guy. I'm just going to glue them together because our little character is going to be the dancing character and all you're going to need for that is like some dimensional adhesive. Uh, you can use a square one. I usually trim it down to make it more round or round adhesive would be great too. Um, the circle that makes, in the die cut that makes it dance is a circle, right? So it's best if you had something circular, but use whatever you like. I'm gonna glue that one here. And then I'm gonna glue this one on top of this one, okay? I'll be right back. So we have our sentiments. We have three card bases and we'll just get started. So I'll start with the simplest one, which would be our little Grim Reaper. He's so cute. I brought out some black, like shiny paper. Hopefully I can get all this on the one piece. Um, so maybe that and this, and that's awesome because basically that's all I need for the shiny part. So I had just enough. What I'll do is I'll tape that run that through. He does have this little area that's kind of like black or, you know, I was going to do a gray just to differentiate it from the black. So this is kind of like behind his little hood. Um, we also have these pieces that could also be gray, but I'm gonna do them silver just so that they stand out a little bit more. They're part of a sickle, so we have that, that. Um, just looking for a scrap of white paper. Of course I have tons of them. That won't work. Oh my gosh, you guys like that. Perfect. Um, I was going to say, this one has like his little hands. I think that's okay. I'm wondering if this also needs to be a different color, like black. But either way, I'm going to roll this through some brown paper. And let's see. That looks good there. And then this can go through some silver paper until I figure out if that's part of his hand, this little bit right here, okay? So silver paper, and I'll be right back. Yeah, so a little piece of this is actually gonna be in the back of like his little robe hand. And then this, I have some silver here, but um, I'll just run these through silver and black. So silver up here, black at the base. But let's see, uh, I pretty much ran everything at the same time here, which is really nice. If I'd known I was gonna do the silver and the black, I would have also popped one of those little guys there. But we have our pieces here. Oh my goodness. <laughs> How cute. We don't need these eyeball pieces, but we do need these little hands. So we have that. And okay. What we can do is kind of put some of this stuff together. So his little here. I'm just going to glue everything down flat, but if you want to, of course, pop up this area or pop up the skull from the base, you know, however you want. And I'm assuming, yeah, there's like a shape there. You can pretty much see that this goes here. How cute is that? And then his little face. So the only other thing we need is obviously that's going to go on our card base. We need that little portion that's going to come off of this one here. Um, and then his little sickle, obviously you want to put it together once I have those pieces. And then his little hand will be holding that. So um, let me run those pieces through and I'll be right back. Okay guys, so I got the one black piece and I just ran the whole thing through for the silver. 
and I know just again that's the piece of the sleeve that we don't need from that same die we have it over here so what I can do with that one is go ahead and put a little glue back here now of course you can put on that piece they give you a really good sizable amount for it to glue down but what you're doing is there's like a little curve see there you can just match that up and that'll help you make it look a little more dimensional how cute is that Let's get that lined up really well. And then with these guys, I don't know why my hands do not want to pick stuff up today. This little bit goes on here. It's just an accent piece to make it look more dimensional, right? So I'm going to put the smallest amount of glue just like right here. And just pop this piece. Oh no, these now this doesn't want to help me out either today. Come on. <laughs> Let me scrape that off. Give it a twist. Let's see if it's sticky again. Okay. And I'll stick that down. Let that set up a little bit because that is kind of a a slimy area on a slick surface like that. It just wants to keep moving. So I'm gonna let that set up just a little bit before we stick it onto our sickle and then put them all together. For that, we can put a little glue back here and stick down his little hand. Like this one and I suppose this one's just gonna stick out a little bit over here and I know you saw the thumb kind of got hidden that's okay it doesn't matter this one has a little thumb it's gonna be up like this holding the sickle so we have that and then we're gonna put a little glue on this just that silver side that's on the back side here because your sickle is gonna sit in there really nicely um, just following the shape, right? That contouring. So let me put this to the side. That goes there. Ah! Right on there. Oh my gosh, how cute. And it follows literally where that is and then the, the shape at the top there. So that fits in there perfectly. And again, I'll let that set up a little bit because as you can see, it just takes a little while for something slick like that to set to dry. And I think I'm going to put it on this card base. Let's see what that might look like. Oh my goodness. Yeah, for sure. Look at it. And then his little stuff. So um, I'll be right back. Now while my camera's going to freak out. And we need to put a little glue here. And I'm going to put a little bit behind his little dress. Because what I want, <laughs> or his robe, is for this to be here. But also kind of holding on to this. So you can see I placed it there. But I'm also placing it here. So that it's sticking down behind his little robe, okay? I'm going to let that set up for a second, and I'll be right back. Last little bit. I'm just going to put glue on this because that's easier. And I'm going to get his little hand and put it right on there. <laughs> and let that set up, and uh, we'll get it all together. I'm going to look through my sentiments, see what I want to put on here. Oh my gosh, have a fabulous birthday. <laughs> we do have birthdays in October in my family, and how funny would that be with the Grim Reaper? <laughs> we're going to have to do it. <laughs> all right, I'll okay, be right back. Guys, maybe we're ready. Hopefully that's set up, because, you know, I want to give all this time to dry and be ready to go. A little bit wet there still. Um, so I have some different adhesives this is a really nice big size hole so even if you have like a larger square one just kind of trim off a little bit on the edges like if it was square like this is what I would do just trim a little bit off so that it's more rounded uh, I'm just gonna use one of these it's like a quarter inch type thing and kind of see where we're at so of course wherever you put the glue up here it's gonna fall down so like let's say I put it here it's gonna fall down right so just pay attention to that know what you're doing you have this little head there and I think what I'm gonna do is put it just about there that'd be good that glue is that glue. This is what's going to hold it all together. So we'll put that there. It's going to drop down just a little bit. And then for his head, we can also put some more dimensional there just to help you obviously keep this down. But you don't want it in that same area, right? So just about here. Maybe a couple more up here just to keep it, um, you know, <laughs> for the duration of the card. You don't want that falling apart. So let's put that there. These things are here. And this little guy can go like right here. Oh my goodness. 
And let's just give it a little whirl. So as you're dancing, Grim Reaper, super cute. <laughs> Oh my gosh, I love the dancing cards. They are just the cutest. Sorry put dimensionals on the back of this guy. I probably should use black dimensionals, but that's okay. I have white ones on there. And we can have a fabulous birthday. Oh my gosh, that is so sad with the Grim Reaper. <laughs> that's some dark humor, guys. Okay, so we're going to put that to the side. All right, next we're going to work on... Let's do, let's do our little guy. Now, you know, I mean, there's just uh, different layers and it's still layered up from when I showed you guys how I would layer this. Let me bring that up. So like this base piece, I would cut from white. You can see it's his little hands too. So white on that one. And I guess I can bring out papers as we're talking about it. Um, Oh, good. I was going to say, I have these big, huge scraps of white paper, and I don't want that. I want this. Okay. And, you know, he has accents like, okay, so this is his sombrero, and then you have the underneath part. So, again, these can... You don't have to do an extra layer if you want to. I'll probably cut this from black, because obviously it's a sombrero, and a lot of times shadows, they wear hats like that, and they are black. So, black, and then maybe an accent of gray again, like I did for the little hood of the... Grim Reaper one. Does that fit there? Oh my gosh, you guys, this cannot be any smaller and work for me. There we go. And so I'll tape that. That's for some better. An accent color. You know, do I go traditional? A lot of times they have like a burgundy red kind of color. Let me see if I can find something like that. Uh, I have a lot of red red. I guess we're going to go red red. Why not? Okay, this is the most pinkish red. So we have that. And then, I mean, his top, a lot of times they're just wearing black, right? So, I mean, if you want to go with black again, or if you feel like, you know, just something different. But either way, I'm going to cut this from something black. If it's not shiny black paper, it'll be just black paper. Um, and then, of course, his pant legs, same thing, just out of black. And then he has little accents. So here are the accents that are from his shirt at the very top. And then his shoes. Let me show you what I mean. Right here, you can have a little accent color. So maybe I will do this in black, you know, again with his little legs. And then do this out of red to go back and coordinate with these things. Um, we also have his guitar. So the bass guitar, of course, I'll cut from like a brown paper or I don't know, maybe. And then he has this cute topper piece that if you want to make it traditional, you know, dark brown or something, um, you can do something fun. You also have, I was going to say it looks like a spatula, but it's the end of his little guitar. Um, this and this are accents to the top of his head, right? Like a sugar skull. So, you know, whatever colors you want to cut these things out of will be great. So those are all his pieces. So I'll be right back. As many pieces as I can fit on whatever you're using to cut with, you know, so um, this worked out really well. But I still have a few more pieces to cut, so I'll be right back. I'm going to do a little gold guitar. I thought that's cute. I do have a gold accent here, so I guess I can keep that, too, for the top. And then, again, his little sugar skull head. Um, maybe I'll still use this gold accented with something else, a different color, for this little piece. So I'll keep that, too. Put this to the side. I'll be right back. These are so cute. Um, Suppose you want a paper piece back in, like this little area or his mouth, you know, that'd be really cute. Uh, just adding more color, more sugar scully. <laughs> sugar scully, that's a adjective. Um, let's see here. Just putting my dies back. Uh, where do we want to start? Uh, let's start with a little guitar. So again, I have a piece for around here. Again, not too, too much glue, and I have a little piece for up here. Okay. So we have this guy, for the guitar, Oop. right, and then we have this top piece here, looking like a little spatula right there. So we have that cute, and then his sombrero, I'm assuming this shape has a very specific shape. Put that there. And then he has this cute red accent here, so I'm just going to kind of lightly put glue on that. Clean that up a little bit. 
Oh my goodness. <laughs> Look at that. I mean, every just every piece that you add just makes things pop. I mean, that is really, really cute. Now his little skull, I believe, goes right into here. And as you see now, he has that gray and then his little mouth. So again, whatever accent pieces you would want to finish that off with, I mean, you know, go for it. Uh, I might piece back in some cute colors in there just to make it look really, really adorable. So for right now, if I'm going to do that, his face or his head needs to be high enough to piece something here, right? So let's put it like up there. I don't need to put glue at his little neck bit, but like right here. That works out. Accent on his shirt. Like this. It's this guy. Of course you want to place that correctly. And I'm so sorry the other day, when was it? Oh, when I made the swing card for the Spellbinders club kits. I had my hands up here and um, I had it closed up so like a lot of it was out of frame and I'm like ah that drives me nuts because I don't mean to do that I want you guys to see obviously what I'm doing with this guy a little glue here a little glue there and he has little red shoes and they are just the shape of whatever's going on here so you can just figure that out very easily there's that one actually let me go a little more this way there we go and then this one over here. Um, then we have that little gold piece that I told you was kind of for his head here. And then that, even that piece has another accent piece that layers on top. But for right now, I'm just going to put this one down. And let me think about if I'm going to paper piece anything back in here. Probably the, and the eyes in here. Just because it is gray, I mean, I can go back with black or something. Um, but I'll be right back. So run that through again to get eyes and the nose and mouth part. Again, you can do these colors, you know. Oh, it looks really cute when you do, like, really bright blue eyes. That's always fun. Um, but I'm going to piece back that. Piece back that. Piece that back in. Let's get everything popped out of here. Oh, a little black skull. How cute. Um, I need his nose, which just popped out, and then his mouth part. A little mouth part. I'm just going to put a little glue in here. A little nose. And again, since we're doing several today, I don't know that I'm going to paper piece the other portion back in. But there you go. Whoop! Upside down heart <laughs> for the nose. Ah! Now this stuff is coming out. There we go. Okay. And I'll be right back. Oh, you know what? Sorry. I meant to say I also cut the little accent piece from this piece, the yellow. So, um, in yellow. So I'm going to pop that right in here. And that will be that. We'll leave it goes like this. And basically that's our little guy, guys. So I'll be right back. So now that's had a moment to set up. Um, what we have here is we are going to stick his neck to his shirt. So this area to this here. How cute is that? It's just that little bit on the back. It looks something like that. Now his little guitar kind of goes into his hands. So we have that. I'm just kind of holding that. This little guy can go under his little arm. Oh my gosh, it has an opening there. So you can just slide this under here. How cute is that? And then up towards his hand area. Now he does have a little space there. If you wanna piece in like some something, you know, go for it. Um, oh, that's tough. I kinda of wanna pop up his little arm. That'd be fun. So let's just put, okay, let's just wait a second. I'm just going to grab a couple of really small dimensionals. This adds a little bit of difficulty, guys, but let's just turn this over and I'm gonna put dimensionals on his little hand. So as he holds the guitar, it's like giving a little bit of a dimension there. Let's pop that open up again. Ah, where is she? He was strumming in here. Yes. Okay. And then it goes up that way. 
So up here I'm just going to put a little glue, hopefully. Hold that down. We're going to cover that with his hand anyway, so this is fine. So hopefully you can see what I'm doing. I just popped it up with a little dimensional there, which looks really cute. And then down here, his hand will hold that down. So I'm going to hold that down for a moment, and I will be right back. So, last little bits, his little hand here, and then the little hand's going to go there. So obviously you can follow the shape of the um, die cut there. There we go. And then this guy can go up here. Oh my goodness, this is super adorable. I'll pop it up just a little further. There we go. Look at that. And then his little legs are going to dangle underneath. And let's see what we have for him. We have our little lady. He doesn't have a lot of color going on. You know, let's put him here. And we'll put her over here, I suppose. Why not? That way this black with the red really pops off the gray. And again, you know where are we at? About there. Let's get ourselves a big circle. Or not that big, but a circle. <laughs> oh my goodness, he is so cute. Okay, and on this side I'm just going to put some dimensionals behind his head, kind of towards the top again. You don't want it to impede his little legs or anything like that. Just got a few of these guys going. I always forget, instead of wasting my circle shapes, I should just cut this stuff down and use that, but oh well. Okay, and where are his little legs? About there. This can be here. His little guitar a little bit forward, and let's see his little dancing legs. <laughs> you guys, he is so cute. Oh my goodness. Okay, you're my favorite ghoul, which I suppose would be for a girl. I don't know, you're wicked cute. I would never ghost you. You're a scream. Oh my gosh, happy Halloween. Happy haunting. Oh my gosh. Let's do happy haunting. And I'm going to put some dimensionals and just stick that down. Okay. And there is our second card. I mean, look at these little guys. <laughs> super, super cute. Oh my goodness. All right, let's make our little gal. So now we have our little lady over here and she has more going on. So I went from like very simple, you know, pieces, a couple more, and then she just has, you know, her flowers and everything else. So, of course, um, I have these little bits of white scraps from a project I was working on the other day. So, her head, right, her little hands, these little pieces, don't all have to be white, because obviously this has, like, her little lips in there. I think it has some kind of cuff here. Um, so, you know, you probably need to cut that from different things, but I'm going to cut it out from white to begin with. Her hair, again, it has two different pieces, so I'll cut that from some black paper, which I have over here. Hope you can see that. She has flowers, and um, you know, to adorn her little dress, her hair, or wherever it is that you want to put the flowers, basically her hair, I suppose. We have this, that's her shirt, and then like layers, like ruffles for her skirt that has two ruffle areas. So, um, and then like a little something on her, like a little shrug at the top. So of course, you know, these can all be the same color and then this is coordinating with those or however, right? Whatever it is you want to do, run it through several different colors, however you want. I'm going to find some cute colors and I'll run one through one, one through the other. Uh, she has her maracas, which, you know, however you want to do that, I'll probably just run them through some kind of wood color and then you have the accent if you want to make them real traditional or if you want to make them fun and bright, you have that. Uh, that goes on top. And then we'll talk about the flowers in just a minute. Now this right here are her hands, or her arms. And then this is the piece that holds onto her skirt. Um, I don't know if it's the top skirt or the bottom part, so I, we'll see about that. But anyway, this is a mechanism that it's going to be in the back. You're not going to see it, so I'm just going to run this through white paper also, okay? And then we'll get started on her. I haven't cut out the smallest, like, um, pieces yet, but... Uh, you know, where the hands and like other little facial features or whatever it was that was on that small one because I don't want to deal with those quite yet. I wanted to put this stuff together and then we'll work with that. So let's see all these pieces here. Let's get these guys back on my magnetic carrier as we do not want to lose anything. Oh, I have one more little ruffle piece here too. So there we go. Um, okay. 
let's get to gluing so as far as the maracas I'm just gonna put a little glue on the outside here I just made them wooden color let me get a little bit closer and hopefully not work outside the area I have here for you guys I'm sorry uh, I was editing I was like no <laughs> what was I doing it's because usually I have this whole area panned out and so it doesn't matter where I work here you're still gonna see it but I closed up really close and then totally forgot about that so let's get this guy in here hopefully that's okay how cute are those the little gold accents really coordinating with our little guitar and how adorable will these guys be on the same card together super cute so we have this guy and like I said it has like a little shrug piece which is this piece I just want with purples and like lavender and I put the glue a little bit lower because I do know that it leaves like that little bit there so cute and then this skirt let me see if this oh you know what? it goes underneath probably or what do you think I think that looks cuter underneath but what do I know let me see here um, I don't know guys whichever one you want it looks like in one of the examples here they have it on top but wouldn't it be cute to show both layers I'm doing it this other way so let's put this down here and get this on here that way we see both layers that they're both kind of like foofy right and that looks cute oh my gosh I need to focus on where I am okay so that's obviously her top the bottom layer of her dress, this layer, and so if I did the bottom layer on that one, I'm going to put it on here too. This one's going to be a little trickier because it's very small, but hopefully we can get something showing there. Yeah, maybe this one should have been on top, but that's okay. I got it. I got it. It's on there. In the back. But if you want to put yours on top, go for it. Okay, uh, what else do we have here? What I'm trying to see is where this one actually hooks on. Oh, okay, hold on. It's her whole dress, right? Because look at the shoulders. <gasps> okay, so a little bit of that does show goodness. Um, thank goodness I should say that I cut it out in white. I wasn't sure. It did say the dress swings. And I'm like, okay, the dress swings are like, I don't really know what they're referring to as far as the dress swings. Um, so let's put these guys on here and get her little arms going. That is so cute. Putting her arms a little bit far out because I want the maracas to really show in her little hands. So I'm putting them so you see a lot of her wrist bone here. Is that a thing? A wrist bone? I don't know. Okay, let's see here. There we go. Okay, cool. Well, that is very, very cute. Okay, so I'm going to glue this here then. Ah! Uh, let's get that here. Oh my gosh, you guys. I love this dress. This is the cutest thing ever. So there is a little sash piece that's on like the other die. Um, and I mean, if you wanted to make these different layers, like add some dimensional, you could do that. I just think about the swinging and I don't want anything in the way. So for me, this is okay. Just the way it is like this. Oh my gosh. Oh my goodness, that is so cute. And nice and heavy, so that's really great because I'm going to put it right at the top of that little, at the base of the bump, right at the top of the dress. Um, how cute is that? Her waist is, as the kids call, snatched. <laughs> Small waist, how cute. Just all cinched in there. Um, and then her hair, I mean, I'm just going to glue the little bun in the back. It is two separate pieces. You can do whatever you like with that kind of thing. But that should be glued back here. And then her little head obviously is going to go inside there somewhere. And her maracas, oh my gosh, she is adorable, you guys. Look at this. And then push it all the way in. I know with my swing one, again, I pushed her little hair in there, but I was like, ah, I should have pushed it a little further up. So I'll put a little glue here. Obviously glue all in her face down here. Not super low because her face ends kind of, this area ends. But let's push that all the way in as well as you can. Oh my goodness. She is so cute. Okay, so I'm going to hold that together for a little bit. Look at her pieces, <laughs> guys. 
she is so adorable. Oh my gosh. Okay. So as far as maracas go, I guess we can place them now. I'm just putting a little bit of glue here and there. You know, basically the little hands are going to come on here. So I do want it to look like the little sticks are there. You can see them pretty good. Okay, so on this one die, let me grab it. Oh, see I put it on here, I just didn't run it through because I didn't want my little white pieces missing. So I'm gonna run this through real quick and then we'll pop down her hands. I mean, if you just wanna use the white sash, you can definitely do that. Um, I was looking for her little hands here. So a little thumb was up there, this here, thumbs up there, this here. And they just fit on here like that. <laughs> How cute. And then this one goes on this side. And just following the shape of, again, the die that was already there. I suppose I could have brought them up a little bit more. I just wanted her to have, you can see the little sticks from the maracas, so that's why I put it the way it is. All right. I'm going with, I'm going with it. Um, okay, on this same die, again, she has this little sash area here that goes on her little waist. If you don't mind using white, you already cut it out of white, then go for it. Um, you know, you can do accent colors, of course. She does have little lips, though, on this same die. So, <laughs> it's right here, her little mouth. How cute is that? And then there are flower centers, I believe, also there. So I'm gonna run this through something kind of, um, if you want to do lips, as you can see, Sherry has a little, like, a little slit in her mouth. You don't have to do the mouth, the lips, if you don't want to. Um, I'll run it through something like red, just to really pop, and I'll be right back. So let's get her little red mouth. And I'm just going to put the smallest little glue right here in the center, just a little tiny dab. And then we'll have, <laughs> how cute is that? Oh my gosh, and even the lips are parted just like it is down in there. That is so cute. Again, you know, I'm probably gonna leave this other area here, but if to get any of these other um, accent pieces, just run the, the skull part back through, like blue paper, yellow paper, whatever it is, and you can piece those little colors back in there. And she's very cute with her little red lips. And then um, flowers, right? So let's see about some flowers for her little hair or wherever you wanna put them. Uh, we have this die over here. Sorry, I'm talking away from the camera. So, let's just run those through a couple different colors, maybe some leaves, and I'll be right back. I've got a couple different colors. I want to see what I want to do here because, um, you know, the flowers are super cute. And a lot of times they'll have like a little arrangement like this of flowers. It is covering up her hair, but that's okay. I just want to see how I would do this if that's what I was going to do. Oh my goodness, how cute. Or maybe a blue one and two red ones. How about that? Red, red, just to bring her lips color back in. That is very cute. Okay. And then we have um, flower centers. So let me run the flower centers through. There are three flowers on the die. There are three centers on here, which is really nice. I'm gonna run through some gold paper and I'll be right back. Let's get rid of this. Oh my gosh, how cute. I'm just kind of popping those out. I can see this one right here. Okay, I will grab that with this. Little dot. Tiniest amount. I'm telling you, glue, even the smallest amount, it'll kind of seep out. So, um, just really, really small amount there. And just popping those in the center. However, I want there. Okay. And I'm going to put a little glue here. A little glue here and a little glue in the center because what I'm going to do is leave it so I can stick flat, um, leaves in there. You know? So let's say that one's there. Let's pretend this one's here. Like this one's here. I still have room to put in some little leaves. So you can put glue at the bottom or on the top. And tuck some little leaves here and there. How cute! one there. So again with her, just like the other ones, you can do as little or as much decoration. Um, let's put that there. How adorable. Oh my gosh. 
I love her. And I suppose just to make it symmetrical, I'll do the same thing on this side, pretty much. Just, ah, I can pick this up. I don't know why I'm working the way I was. Also, you know what? I already glued that down. And that was the first one I glued down. So let's just take the little stem off. We don't need it. And we can pop that there. And we'll probably pop this stem off too. The glue. Hopefully I was in frame, you guys. I am so sorry. Oh my gosh. Okay, let's let that set up. We have some flowers for the next one. And I'll be right back. I'm trying to clean up a little bit here. Let's bring this guy back. How cute is she? Oh my goodness, look at this. Love her, absolutely love her. So we're gonna bring her up a little bit higher. Let's get our circles. I think that'll be good, probably right there. Let's get this going. You guys, I woke up at five in the morning to finish this video up because we're taking our RV out for the first time and there are lots of things I need to get to and also I want to make the videos for you guys to see while I'm gone and uh, this is so easy I mean I haven't even had coffee and how cute are these so fun okay so let's just put this here again if I don't want to waste my little circles that are perfect I can just come in here and grab uh, some chunks of this stuff and I cut this in a way that I thought would fit under here um, and that does so that's good Again, avoiding, my goodness, what is this thing doing? Um, the area where it's gonna be in her head. So I'm gonna put a little bit more right there and then that's probably it because it looks like her head's pretty much right on there, right? So let's just put a little more right there. And that will be that for my adhesive. <laughs> and let's just put that right there, <laughs> oh my goodness. It feels really nice and sturdy. There are a lot of layers on that little head, so it just is really nice. And let's check her out. <laughs> there she goes. I love that they made a bigger hole for the dancing, because uh, before the hole was kind of right on the little circle, and it still moved, but this makes it move so much more because there's just a lot more room for it to just kind of dangle, right, and do its thing, be really loose. That is really fun, oh my goodness. Okay, so uh, you're my favorite ghoul. All right, so let me put some dimensionals on that and stick it down and I'll be right back. Okay guys, and I put them all down here. I mean, you can put your sentiment wherever you want, right? Just put your character wherever it is that you think works best for that, right? Oh my gosh, you guys. This is the cutest, <laughs> oh my goodness. And um, I've been waiting to share this with you guys because like I saw it and I was like oh my goodness so it's something I had to keep under wraps for a little while a couple months here but look how cute so we have our Grim Reaper we have our little Katrina and Katrina over here with his little legs oh this is what okay so earlier I had shown you I kind of went like this to this guy so just make sure this is up and that way his little legs can go the whole way oh my goodness these are so adorable. <laughs> Thanks for watching, guys. Three cards made pretty quickly. I mean, with all the detail that they have, I am super impressed with those better press backgrounds and then the better press as an embossing tool over here. It's super fine and just gorgeous. Look at that. That looks like something that you would have purchased. You know how you buy foil paper that already has like some kind of embossing on it? That has very much the same feel. All right, guys. Well, thanks for watching. I'll have uh, images coming up. I'll have the links in the description box. I'll link all the different collections, plus the things, uh, today's collection there in the description box or wherever it might be available. So thanks for watching, guys. I'll see you at the next one. So Bye pictures, now. And I just remembered um, to show you better up close the uh, stamp set that goes with the uh, Dance and Halloween for this year. So, um, you know, maybe you don't have the better press and you, you know, have other ideas for uh, sentiments or want other ones. So we have Happy Halloween, you know, Hey Sugar, Let's Brew Up, brew up a Good Time, Curses, I Missed Your Birthday, Have a Frightfully Sweet Halloween, Party Like There's No Mañana, You Are Ghoultastic. I mean, it's really sweet and they're showing you here how you might want to use those. So uh, I do want to show you that because I went with the other sentiments today, but we do have a photopolymer stamp set that can be picked up. All right, guys, thanks for watching. Bye now.